You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I remember you signed the wife in the wife, really. It was a bit of a club, you know, it was a, uh, all the doctors used to get in there because she used to get a lot of ships in Ellsmithport, Scandinavian ships, there's always punch ups in there, you know. Yeah. And anyway, this guy just come over to me, he, he knew of me, he wanted a friend, more of a, you know, do you want a drink, but more of an acquaintance sort of thing. He says, uh, blah, 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 blah. Some guys are owed him three grand. And he said, if I get him the three grand, I can have one and a half, and he can have one and a half. Now, one and a half grand in 1974, because this happened about a week before I got arrested. One and a half grand was a lot of money. If I remember rightly, I think you could buy a brand new Mini Cooper for 600 quid. Jesus. Then days. You could buy a three-piece suit uh, for about 25 quid. New pair of shoes for a fiver. Anyway, so I said, fucking hell, you will have a bit of that. So he's given me the address, blah, blah, blah. I've gone round there, haven't I? Mate of mine's waiting in the car. I've rang the bell. He just opened the door and I've stuck the uh, uh, 12 ball double barrel in his, in his neck. Fuck you now. This is right, get in. So as we've gone into the front room, there was another three geezers in there sitting at a table. Apparently, they was all playing cards. Oh, yeah. So it was a poker night. I didn't know. But uh, <laughs> I'm now, I've got this geezer stuffed in his neck, sort of, and the three sitting at the table just looking at the house. <laughs> time you with me <laughs> so I said well, don't only one fucking move just stay where you are and keep your hands on the tables right and this is exactly what I've done this is exactly how it happened I've marched him over to the chair he had like a big fucking it wasn't a uh, uh, what sort of chair it was like a big chair an arm chair but it was quite massive you know yeah and it wasn't one of them where you sit back and it goes back. It was just a sturdy, old-fashioned old chair. So what I've done, I've bent him over there, right? You didn't bump him. I your belt and I pulled his pants down and trousers. You just... Oh, you, the, you didn't bump him, did you? You didn't bump him. <laughs> did, you, did you get your cock out and bump him? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bastard. Hey, I, I bet he wasn't feeling too grand after that. <laughs> Fucking hell. We should have seen the geezer's faces at the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to pop it. <laughs> anyway, oh. <laughs> he spent down with his fucking chair. <laughs> he's got the two pals and the cheeks of his arse. He could probably feel them on his... On his <laughs> What's that thing called Scotch for? <laughs> <laughs> I says, right, listen, boys. I want one and a half grand. Twice, cut it up, it's three grand. One and a half for each pocket. And otherwise, I'm going to blow his plums clean off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, was it? I said, right, cut it up. I put it into two piles, one and a half grand in each pile. <laughs> Did you get it? And I fucking left there. Like, I felt, I, after that, I thought I could do anything, you know. I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. It's the easiest <laughs> one and a half I'd ever made in my life. I bet he fucking shit bet, himself. He, he might be dead now, but I bet he never fucking forgot that. Oh, well, you're not going to forget that, are you? When I, when I did the other days, the, the, the boss man, he's, he's one and a half grand. I, it was a couple of days later, he said, I heard what you did. 
Fucking hell. Do you know what it is? It's yet, listen, he said, Mickey, if I've got any more bits of work, I'll come in straight for you. <laughs> you don't, I don't know what's worth getting your fucking plums blown off or getting bummed. Hey, imagine, imagine before I left if I had bummed him. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, that would have been... That would have been pushing it a bit far, bombing him. Can you imagine bombing him saying, right, get that fucking money chops up, you lot. <laughs> have his plums blown off. <laughs> can you imagine when you left the house? Can you, can you imagine when you left the house? I bet when you walked out the house and left him, I bet he thought someone had spiked his fucking drink or something. <laughs> Did the old bill not clock you for that? Yeah, no, I've got, I've got a question over it. Did you? Yeah, when I got nicked, oh. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. It's a load of bottoms. <laughs> it's a load of plums. <laughs> and the, the plumbers <laughs> laughed, you know. I bet they fucking did. I bet that... Fucking hell, you're a card, you are, boy. I bet <laughs> Right, fucking bend him over the ta- over the chair, get his fucking belt off under his pants, pull his pants and his boxes down. I bet he never ever forgot that. I bet he never fucking lived that down. I bet he thought, what the fuck is he going to do to me? It's turned out well, though, because his wife and kids want in the house, apparently. Well, it's fucking fortunate, isn't it? She's coming back. And she's sitting bent over the chair. And I'm behind her, but she thought, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. But now do you see why, after a week of fucking insanity, I was, I was relieved when I got nicked, you know. Yeah. I bet he was fucking relieved and all. <laughs> he thought, fucking give him 20 fucking years. 